my computer because later on if we share it with somebody, it might be of great help to them. And uh, I'm going on sharing the screen and I'm sh sharing straight away my today's presentation. I don't need to share any sound because it doesn't have any videos at all. Uh, Pooja ji, namaskar. And I begin. You are in right in time. You are right in Hello, time. Hello, sir. How are you? Bas Hello, sir. Fine, better. Hello, everyone. The recording will be available with me. <clears throat> and we might uh, pass it on to those who need to go through it for a revision. Uh, the, the purpose of this presentation is to help our schools to face all the challenges. And those challenges can be faced by educate planning and educate preparation. If we are aware of what needs to be done and do not take things lightly, then possibly there won't be any challenges. The only thing that we as principals, vice principals in charges of various processes, be it transport, be it mess, be it the hostel, or be it the reception, the front office, or be it the estates, we will have to be on our toes. We'll have to be very, very vigilant. Uh, when we developed this presentation, we took into account the recommendations of the World Health Organization, WHO. But later on, we found that our own SOP, which had come from the Ministry of uh, I mean, Health primarily, and then was taken over by the Ministry for Human Resource and was shared with the Education Ministry also, was almost similar. Uh, certain portions were dropped, a line was added somewhere. The needs of the country were taken into consideration. So what we have done, we have taken the SOPs and whatever information we are sharing with you is based on those SOPs and what we have found were the prevailing practices. Uh, when we did this presentation the first time, we took uh, information from Taiwan, we took information from Vietnam, we took information from some Japanese schools, from some Taiwanese schools, and we went ahead with it. And we even played some videos of how they were arranging things. But things have become very common. In these six months, we know about that. So we deleted that and added more of our own conditions and our own SOPs. Our purpose is to help the management and the school administration to support them, because by now, most of their plans have been initiated and they are already functional because there is hardly any time now left. Tomorrow, they are starting with classes 9, 10th, 11, 12th, some schools with only 11th and 12th, some schools with only 9, 10th, 10th, some schools with only 12th. Some schools have deferred the opening by a couple of days more because they knew that once we start today, then we have to close it for the Dashera two or three days break minimum. And then we'll have to close it for Diwali again. So they may have deferred it depending upon their own convenience. Now our school reopening plans, as per the government order from Ministry of Home Affairs, which came on 30th of September, they have given us guidelines for reopening. I would like that each school has a copy of this guideline, rather three or four copies. One could be put on uh, in the library, placed in the library. The other could be shared with some members of the staff and each one of them could take the concerning page or the concerning articles and read them thoroughly. Or there could be a meeting also arranged where it could be explained to the, to the functionaries, to the process owners, like the admission in charge, the transport in charge, uh, the purchases in committee in charge, they could be given this, uh, especially this SOP will definitely be followed by some SOPs, some guidelines from the state governments also. While majority of state governments have opened up the schools, there are a few that have deferred it. There are some that are opening at it after 31st October, and there are some that have decided that they will open it only in the first week of November. So as per the Disaster Management Act, which covers the COVID as a disaster, some guidelines have been put in place and these guidelines need to be read, understood, and implemented. The guidelines regarding health and safety and regarding reopening of schools is the main document. The title of it is Learning with Physical and Social Distancing. This needs to be studied carefully. The most important line or the most important sentence that I felt was, 
the distance learning mode on the all learning learning mode must continue as the preferred teaching mode that means if children are not coming to school and even if they are coming we should try to continue with the online learning mode because we might have to provide them this education through the online learning mode as much as possible even during these times and afterwards wherever students are being taught through the online some students may prefer to attend these online classes they may not attend physically they should be permitted they should be allowed you cannot persuade them please don't persuade them don't compel them compulsion is out of question you can't persuade them now these students may attend the schools only after you have written to their parents and you have obtained a written consent a written consent will not be asking for their opinion through a google form asking whether they are do, uh, saying yes or no that could happen that could give you a kind of an idea as to how many are coming but a written consent means you send them a form and they print that form type i mean uh, get a print out of that form sign that form electronic signatures will not work here they sign that form and send it to you and the written consent is not only for telling you that i give my consent for my child receiving his education physically now or i do not give it no in addition to that there are three things that are important number 1 i do inform you that there have been no cases of covid within the family that we have not traveled abroad or do we have any plans of traveling abroad during the next 3 months and number 4 which is very uh, number 3 which is very important that in case god forbid my child catches this infection in any way either at school or during the transit or travel or at home i indemnify the school the school will not be held responsible or liable for any damages whatsoever this is the consent and the sop does talk about it but somewhere it goes very mild somewhere it says it forces it attendance of those children who do not come but they attend online classes whether they do or not you cannot enforce attendance at all it will purely depend on the consent of the parents the states and the union territories will prepare their own sops they will give you their own guidelines regarding health and safety precautions because the covid 19 has spread in different ways at different places there is a little doubt among people that it has several uh, viruses and some of them like h and l are at one place which uh, seems to be inconsistent they seem to be more rumors but then the way it has spread uh, i heard of a super spreader in a city who was responsible for spreading it to among 500 people i heard of a super spreader uh, in a daba somewhere near rotak who gave it to 76 waiters in one day i mean those who were serving in that daba 76 of them were found infected during a day so different states have different situations different conditions so the states have been requested by the ministry of education that you must give us your own sops and direct the schools accordingly once the schools are allowed to open these sops become mandatory Man mandatory would mean uh, you cannot deviate from them they are now statutory in a way although they are not backed by any law but when they come as a government order especially in disaster especially at the time of uh, uh, i mean a disaster like covid you have to follow them. now those schools maybe yours was one of them i pray to god that it was not one of them which was used as a quarantine center for some time or which was used as a center uh, as a hospital for covid patients well there a lot of cleaning needs to be done which will take at least 7 to 10 days a uh, lot of sanitization deep cleaning we call it and educate majors need need to be taken even we want to protect not only our students and teachers but other staff members the helpers the cooks their families which they visit uh it is also desirable that teachers and other members of staff who all of them have 
a cell phone or a mobile must download the application what we call as Arogya Setu. It's a very, very good application. I have, I have barred it at certain places, not given it absolute information, but vis-a-vis -vis my safety and my status, I have allowed it and it tells me that I am within a radius of 500 meters, I have only two cases. Within a radius of 1,000 meters, I have four cases. Looking at my health status, it tells me that I am safe or I am at risk because there are eight people who are within a radius of 500 people of me. So the application from that perspective is very useful, must use it. Based on these guidelines, every school must develop its own SOPs because you can't ask everybody to follow these guidelines. You might have to steadily customize them for the requirements of your school. Make your SOPs, short ones, giving instructions to your own teachers as well as to different stakeholders. There may be an SOP for the parents, there may be an SOP for the students, there may be an SOP for the teachers. Uh, these, these SOPs must become operational a day earlier than when the states declare the school open. That if the states have declared the school open from 19, the SOPs should be already in place from 18. And then at the same time, uh, from time to time, you are required to, we are all required to comply and follow the instructions that are given to us by the Ministry of Home Affairs regarding COVID. See, tomorrow may they, they may add up something or which we pray to God must happen within the next one or two months, they may say we need to inoculate everybody so that we prevent them from any further infections of COVID. I was, I was sad to learn that uh, in, a, in a country in the world, you must have heard it in the news, I don't want to name them, uh, the second wave of COVID has started and they have again gone in for a lockdown. Uh, because the COVID-19 is sometimes evolving, sometimes changing. I remember the day when all over India we had more than 90,000 cases. Yesterday I heard we had only 50, 6,000 cases. If you check from region to region, uh, in Noida the number of cases per day is now fallen down to less than 200. In certain other states it's more than 3,000. In Delhi, for example, it has fallen down from 4,000 to 2,000. In Maharashtra, it's still uh, at a tolerably higher number than in other states. So this will vary in terms of space. And therefore, you will have to be ready for that. Safety protocols will have to be accordingly adjusted by you from time to time, depending on the requirement. You see, what applies to a school in Delhi may not apply to a school in Chhattisgarh. What applies to a stay school in UP may not apply to a school in JNK. Some conditions. Overall, the disaster plans are the same. Uh, the measures that have been adopted or the suggested measures will always depend upon the local situations of that particular place. Uh, my advice or our advice to the schools is that in the light of the SOPs given by the government of India, please constitute your own committees, committees for everything. Issue copies of guidelines to the process owners. That's one who is in charge of that. If you have somebody who is in charge of cleanliness and maintenance of the campus, he must be given. He is the process owner of cleanliness. If there is somebody who is in charge of security, he must be given a copy of the guidelines because he has to take charge of the gate or the gates. If there is somebody in charge of transport, he must be given a copy of the guidelines because he has to arrange transportation of children accordingly. This committee, which will constitute of not only one person, but two or three people to assist him, must study it and decide to implement it. Give them the materials. Well, that's the responsibility of the management, the principal, the administration, all materials which are required and please, the management must take a little uh, precaution, the administration, they must inspect each and every aspect. And wherever they find that there is a deficiency, get that fulfilled, that filled, and go and inspect that area once again. Don't trust that, no, we have filled up that deficiency, now there is no deficiency, go and see that the deficiency has been removed. Please involve everybody. This is not the job of one person. 
one principal alone or one person in the management or in the school cannot do all this. Everybody has to be involved to see that even though it may not fall within his area of jurisdiction, he has to see that there are other areas where there is a lapse somewhere, it must not be allowed. Please put up signages. I have seen them in most of the schools, they have already been put up. These are educational uh, placards that are put up, like always wear a mask. Sanitize yourself before you enter the school. Uh, get yourself uh, checked. Do not touch others. Maintain a distance, social distance of six feet or 1.5 meters. These are the signages. And signages about your classroom assembly, signages about your activities, signages about timings, signages about how often can the child come out of the class and use the spots that are kept for social distancing, which paths he has to use for movement in the school. All this must be given. Please call the parents and request them that you can in small groups maintaining the social distance and come and see the arrangements that we have made for the children of transportation in the buses, of uh, by crossing out the seats which will not be used, or also what kind of arrangements we have made in the classes as to how social distancing will be maintained and what arrangements we have made for teaching demands to give a demonstration of it if that's not possible they do not want to come very few come organize a virtual tour it's so simple take a camera in your hands and go around the school and let somebody be talking and telling them where you are walking what are you showing them highlight those things that they want to see the gate for example demonstrate how you will be chucking things at the gate what kind of uh, social distancing arrangements you have made in the corridors, in the classrooms. Uh, show them your sick bay. Show them the canteen and the hostel dormitories. Show them the lobbies. And then this is the virtual tour. Please explain to all your colleagues what your emergency and disaster management plans are. We do have plans, but we do not explain them to everybody who is involved. Because unfortunately, if there is a case reported to you that during the day we have found a child who is running temperature and he has a rash or he is getting irritable, he is feeling bad, we have removed him, what do we do? Do we close down the school for three days as happened in a school where they found the accountant was having, uh, was infected with uh, corona because he had got himself tested a day earlier, interacted with about 20 members of staff who had come to the school either to draw their salary or to render some statements. He had even interacted with the principal. So the principal, realizing what the dangers were, closed down the school for three days for even the staff that used to come to help the students to get their difficulties removed. Now, if such an eventuality occurs and you have to close down the school at that very moment, what will be the exit emergency plans? How will the children be sent home? What kind of news will be given outside? How will this information percolate? How many days will it take us to sanitize everything once again? And how will we restore the confidence of the people? Please orient the parents, especially about teaching learning. You see, this is the most important concern after safety. After safety and health of the children, the concern that they have is that teaching must go on. If I am sending my child and taking the risk or if I am not sending my child and keeping him at home, how will learning, what we call as hybrid teaching, how will assessment, which may be a kind of a periodic test, or it may be a pre-board, which I was just now discussing with one of the vice principals of an international school, how will that be conducted? What will be the assessment methodology and the plans? The first thing that you must do is take a decision about prioritizing which classes you would like to call first. I'm glad one of my schools with which I am connected, they decided that they would call only class 12 for a few days and then they would add 9, 10, 11. Good. They are within their rights to see what, what is convenient and perhaps try out their systems before they go for all. You must also do the same thing. Don't open the whole school in one go. Just have four classes which the, which the government has declared can be brought. Bring them in and see the number of children that are reporting, how many of them are ready to report. If you need 
a room which can accommodate all of them, good enough. If there are 20, 25 children, they can be very easily accommodated in a large room. If there are more than 25, say 30, you can shift the room and take a bigger hall, the computer lab, for example, or the library, for example, and you can take this class in that rather than have two parts of it. Uh, use a staggered approach. When the class gets divided, if you have, say, more than 40 children in the class or 40 children in the class and you can't accommodate them, which is not possible, then please say that the odd roll numbers will come on Monday, Wednesday and Friday and even roll numbers will come on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So you ask them to come to the school uh, on odd, as for odd and even roll numbers on alternate days because they will be otherwise receiving education online also. The physical class is more to restore that confidence in them that the school is ready to receive them and at the same time give them the facility of physically having their doubts removed and going for a revision of the entire curriculum that has been covered on online basis during these months. Uh, if you go in for this division of odd and even and on three days and three days for two batches of the same class, please give preference to the children of working parents. There can be working parents who would say that my child would be allowed on all the six days. Because when you allow him for only three days, what will happen on the other three days? He will be all alone at home. Uh, please do not accept any cash payments, any checks, any papers at all. Request the parents that all payments must be made online. Bank transfers must be used. Uh, you, they can pay it through credit cards also at the office of the school but do not deal with cash. Even you are that boy who is receiving cash can be uh, infected. And if he gets infected, it will mean the whole office gets infected. Uh, and then whosoever interacts with him is also getting infected. Please run the school in shifts. The government orders also say, uh, I read from the government of UP, the order says that initially you may start these classes and you may have uh, 9th and 10th in the morning shift for about two and a half to three hours. That's my saying. They don't mention the time anywhere. And then after the first shift, you may have 11th and 12th in the afternoon shift. So they say the school must be run in two shifts, even for 9 to 12th, 9 to 10th in the first shift, and then 11 to 12th in the second shift. You will need to recast your budget because certain expenditures can be abided. Certain expenditures can be dropped out, but other expenditures will be added. Other expenditures will increase. The expenditure on cleanliness, on PPE suits for a few people, expenditure on uh, sprayers, expenditure on sanitization equipment, expenditure on soft cloth to clean the, the bars, the corridors, the tables. This will slightly increase. You will have to provide for them. Uh, let's come to the school buses because that's how the children will come to the school first before we open the school. Please request the parents that wherever it is possible, let the children use their own transport. When I say own transport, he can come on a bicycle, he can come on a motorbike depending on his age, he can be dropped by the parent outside the school, but where they insist that we would like to use the school transport, allow them. They should be told that if you are using local transport, then take educate precautions. In the local transport, there is possibility of contact. For example, they come by small autos. They come by small vans that carry 20 to 30 children at a time. Well, this does not allow for any social distancing. There are dangers. Please request the parents and the staff members that do attend school only when you are healthy. If you even have a symptom like cough, cold, or if you have a symptom like fever, which may be within tolerable limits of say 101, do not attend the school at all. Stay at home and give them the facility. Uh, the school transport should also be run on a staggered schedule. I know school buses are always packed. It's not possible to pack children like that. If all the children start coming to the school, you will have to run the bus twice. So the first shift may be for the junior students. The second shift may be for the senior students. So the bus will have to go twice. Please appoint a conductor in every bus, which is already appointed, but now you have to give him another duty. The duty is that he stays at the gate. He has a thermal scanner in his hand and he checks the body temperature of every child. 
and allows him into the bus only if the temperature is less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be a little more than 98.4, that doesn't matter. Open the windows of the bus and let more of fresh air and sunlight come in. It's better that in the AC buses, you do not ply the AC. Switch the AC off and open the windows. Let there be fresh air. Fresh air does not allow the virus to spread as much as the AC does. And if you are now compelled to use the AC, then see that the temperature is only 23 degrees centigrade, not more than or less than 23 degrees centigrade. Uh, please provide an alcohol-based hand rub, which is a sanitizer, what you call. It's an alcohol-based uh, sanitizer. It should be provided at the entrance of every vehicle. As soon as the conductor notes down the temperature of the child before entering the bus, he should give the child a, a sanitizer so that it's used as a hand rub. Wearing of masks has to be made very compulsory even inside the buses and at the entrance of the buses. And so you check that everybody has a mask. Alternative seating arrangements so, must be made and uh, at least a distance of six feet to be maintained. Those seats that are not used, they can be crossed out with a piece of chalk that nobody is required to sit there and put a signage. Don't sit where we have put a cross. The handles, the holding bars, the seats, they have to be disinfected. They have to be disinfected every time before the use of the bus. And as soon as the children are dropped at the school, disinfect them once again and then only send it or ply it for another route. In case the transport is not school run transport, it has been given to an outsourced contractor who is running buses. He should be, ex the guidelines should be explained to him and it should be ensured by the transport in charge of the school that he follows these instructions, these guidelines urgently and under, under no circumstance will any violation be allowed. Now that the children have come in a bus and they have been offloaded, they start entering. My first request to you would be, please stagger the gates also. If your school has more than one gate, let children from one class to say nursery to upper class five, enter from one gate and six to ninth or eighth enter from another gate and nine to twelfth enter from another gate. If you have many gates, you should have more than one gate because you will have to arrange the departure also sequentially while maintaining the social distance. Now, if you have one only, well then staggering of the timing will help. Do not allow any parent to stand outside the gate. Let there be no out overcrowding. And check the temperature once again of the children who come because all have not come by bus and their body temperature is noted, recorded if need be. Give them an alcohol hand rub or provide a wash basin also where the child can rub his hands or wash his hands, allowing the soap foam to stay for more than 20 seconds on his hands. Hand washing is not a formality. When you allow soap to rub in, it develops a foam. Allow the foam to stay on your hands for 20 seconds. So hand sanitization is important if possible. You could go for sanitization of shoes also, at least using a sprayer. Some people have used mats, which are sprayed with these uh, uh, sanitizers and then the children while walking over that they brush their uh, shoes, the soles of the shoes. Uh, you can sanitize their dress and their bags also using the same sprayer that you used in the classes. Please avoid overcrowding and use as many functional points as possible. Allow only one child to enter at a time, the other maintaining a distance of six feet. The same protocol to be followed for outsiders. If after all the children have entered, some parents want to come and go to the reception or they want to come and meet somebody or they have been called and have to discuss something, then the same protocol, sanitization, coming in one by one, thermal scanner, temperature recorded, these have to be followed with them. Check body temperature and sensitize students, uh, hands of sanitize, hands of students, I should write sanitize, it is sensitized. It cannot be, that's a mistake, I'm sorry. Before they leave the school premises, this may not be possible. It's not so obligatory, but the WHO does mention it. Although our SOP does not mention it. Now corridors, we call them very high contact zones. As the children come and walk across the corridors, there should be different routes that the children will follow. 
it should not be the same route and everybody is rushing to reach his class and thereby they start jostling, they start breaking and violating the social distance norms. All indoor areas, that is the lobbies, the staircase, the escalator, the elevator and the corridors, they should be mopped. Mopped, even the security guard's booth where he stays, even the classrooms, even the cafeteria, they need to be mopped and disinfected with a solution we should contain 1% of sodium hypochlorite and do this mopping should be done in a school after every four hours. That means if your children are there in the school, you have done this mopping tonight, you are ready tomorrow morning. So after two and a half to three hours when one session is off, start doing the mopping within the next 15 to half an hour, start the second session, do again the mopping at the end of the day so that the school is ready for the next day. All sanitation staff that you are using, which go to, who go to the toilets, who do this mopping work, who do this cleaning work, they must use PPE kits and they must use heavy duty rubber gloves, rubber boots and triple layer masks. Please, it's my request to them. Take care of them. They are also your employees. You can't play with their life. They are providing us the security by mopping the floor, by mopping the corridors, by cleaning all the rails, cleaning all the walls, cleaning all the handles of the gates. Therefore, give them PPE kits, give them uh, triple layer masks, give them heavy duty rubber gloves and draw walking plans, that is those circles or those squares on the floor of the corridors. We should indicate to the children which way they are to walk and how much distance they are to maintain. Please do not allow any outsiders within this area, the corridors. If an outsider is mandated to come, he is a visitor, he should go to the visitor's room only. Beyond the visitor's room, he should not be allowed inside the school once the children are there. If he has come and he has been called by a teacher, the teacher should preferably go, take educate precautions, maintain a distance, talk to the person and come back. But don't allow the parent to come to the school inside the school. There are some contact surfaces that are always touched by the children, such as if there is an elevator, the buttons of the elevator. If there is a handrail for going up and coming down, the handles, the call buttons, the counters, uh, telephones, printers, scanners, office machines, tabletops, chair handles, pens, diaries, keyboards, mouse pad, and mouse also. This needs to be mopped off, mopped every two hours. Uh, a linen cloth, we soaked in absorbable linen cloth, which can absorb the fluid, soaked in a solution which contains at least 1% sodium hypochlorite. This mopping should be done as often as possible. I saw and I did show to my friends the pictures of some of the schools outside where teachers have appointed a class cleanliness monitor, a class sanitation, sanitation inspector, something like that. And that person has the solution. That person has this mopping equipment and he does it. Uh, I'm sure every class will have a sanitizer also in addition to this. And every teacher will carry a sanitizer of her own with her and she won't touch anything else. Notices to be put throughout the campus on the billboards that you have or on the display boards that you have along the corridors. Spitting has to be totally banned, please. Spitting has to be totally banned. It's not allowed inside the campus, anywhere. So automatically it means chewing of that pan, gutka and masala, which unfortunately some of our employees do take in, whether they are non-teaching or teaching, and I see it prevalent in some states, especially more prevalent. So this has to be banned totally. There can be no spitting anywhere within the school area. They may say, I did spit, but I spat, I mean, uh, I spit it inside the wash basin or I spit it in the, in the dustbin. No, not allowed, please. And the social norms are to be maintained under all circumstances. The children should be taught to emotionally bond with one another and connect with one another emotionally, not physically. Emotionally, not physically. I was delighted to see an advertisement on the TV where it's an advertisement for perhaps the Tanashk jewelers. Uh, the teacher enters the class 
and a little girl rushes to her, trying to embrace her, hug her. But the teacher stops her with a show of two hands, hugs herself like this, and then each one of them hug themselves. That's the way emotional bonding can be maintained, maintaining social distance. Now come to the classrooms. You have to ensure that one seat is at a distance of 1.5 meters from another seat. If you have a single desk now, you can cross out some seats. One child at the end, another six feet away, finished. You can put the remaining. I don't want you to remove that furniture and reconstruct new furniture overnight. Separation cards like the ones you see on the picture here, the yellow cards, they can be put in. They are partitions. Uh, sometimes you can use separate group desks also because social distancing will have to be followed under all circumstances and do not allow children to come close to one another in the classes. Please teach them safe use and disinfection of personal use items. Children do carry a handkerchief. They should not contact their partners under any circumstances, carry book from one person to another hand over their pencils from one person to another, never touch anything that belongs to another child. And a school bell must be rung after every two hours, asking them either to wash their hands or to sanitize. Ring the bell, let the teacher ask, the, ask one of the students to give a few drops of the sanitizer to everyone and let everybody clean his hands in the class. It won't take more than a minute or two and you can come back and start your work. Kitchen and food hygiene. Tiwari ji, are you attentive for you to add and then two more slides at the end? Yes, sir. All raw material that you bring to the school, whether it's for your canteen or for your mess, this raw material has to be disinfected. Allow it to stay untouched for a couple of hours and then wash it with water. Wash it with a water which is, uh, I mean, to which is added a little percentage of alcohol or a sanitizer. If it has to be eaten uncooked, then please don't touch it for at least 12 to 24 hours. And these items of uncooked food must be kept at a separated place because the virus does decay and the virus takes its own time to decay. See, even in our homes, we do that. If my, uh, I mean, uh, if I bring some vegetables or a delivery boy drops some vegetables, I have a small basin in which the vegetables are kept. I leave them there for four or five hours, then I carry them directly to the sink where rushing water is allowed to pour over them and wash them. And then when they are ready, we start cooking them. The lunch timings for the children in the mess, in boarding schools, day boarding schools have to be staggered because your, your lunch uh, space, it may be very, very large, but how many children can it accommodate at a time? Ensure that. Remove the other surplus seats if they are single seats. If they are benches, you can't remove. But then you have to place your thalis in such a way that they are at a distance of six feet. Therefore, the timings, it will, you will not be able to provide to every child at the same time. So you can have some classes coming at 11, some classes at 12, and some classes at 1. The kitchen staff has to be made to observe all the hygiene practices while cooking and serving. And I would like, this is my personal view, I don't know how many of you can afford, that there should be a supervisor. This should not be a duty given to somebody who is already employed. It should be a new post created, a supervisor who ensures this, who is there in the kitchen all the time, observing that every hygiene practice is followed by the cooking staff and also by the serving staff. Please keep the cooked food and the raw food separate. Even the utensils should not be allowed to go for cross-contamination. There are chances. In case your food is coming from some other party, because there are organizations where food is supplied to the schools and the school authorities have only to distribute it, they have requisite staff for that, please ensure that the party where it's cooked, which cooks it, and where it's cooked is inspected frequently. Your supervisor goes to that place and ensures that those rules are followed, sanitation, hygiene. Ensure that during lunchtime, social distancing is there, supervisor to be appointed there, and then put dividers between various students if you cannot separate them by six feet. If you are able to separate them by only four feet, I mean, put dividers between the eating area to separate students. 
the same applies to toilet and bathroom hygiene. You may have to construct adequate toilet complexes so that there is no overcrowding. Uh, appoint a teacher as responsible or a senior student as responsible so that he or she supervises that social distancing is maintained by everybody within the toilets. There should be running water within the toilets, always for washing of hands. There should be soap and even for equipment for drying of hands. Educate soap bars, liquid soap in the washrooms. And this is important. The toilet pot, the commode, the commode lid, the toilet floors, the shower areas, the taps, the fittings of the taps, the soap dispensers and other items, they should be appropriately cleaned. Cleaned when? According to the norms, maybe after two hours, maybe after four hours with that 1% of sodium hypochlorite solution. There should be drying material also provided within the toilets, such as hand towels or hand dryers. They must be made available. Social distancing under all circumstances in the urinals. I saw in a school, in the boys' urinal, for example, there were six urinals in a single row. They crossed out the second and blocked it with paper or with cloth. Then they crossed out the fourth. So one, three, and five only could be used at a time. And that is how they were able to maintain social distancing when boys would get into the urinals. All cleaning materials like the mops, like the wiping cloth should be put in an appropriate bag. And this should be a disinfectant bag after use. And it should not be put in the dustbin or put in some other area of the school, no. It should be disposed of uh, underground would be the best way, burning would be the best way, but we should find out a mechanism as to how is such a material being disposed of. Sometimes we will have, very soon we'll have the junior kids also, and the junior children of nursery, of KG, or sometimes even upper KG and class one, do soil their clothes, do wet their clothes. And uh, the, the mother, school mother is asked, or the ayah is asked, please go and wash them. Do not allow that. Do not allow washing of personal items of children to be done in the toilets or at any point in the school. Provide them a simple plastic bag. As soon as the item is soiled, put it in the bag and let it be handed over in a paper bag to the, after, put it in a, in a, after putting it in a, a plastic bag, put it in a paper bag and hand it over to the parent for being washed away at home and taken up. There should be adequate drinking water facility. Provide for portable drinking water if your tanks have not been disinfected. I know there are schools where tanks have not been cleaned for months together. I'm sorry to say that. While as there are schools where cleaning is done twice a week. I have seen there are schools where the principal supervises the cleaning along with the estate officer stays there and after the cleaning is done, thanks them, adds a pure, pure, pure tablets to each tank and then gets them locked and uh, congratulates the supervisor. He does it twice a week. There are schools where no attention is paid to this. The tanks, even in our houses are cleaned after months. I think my tank, overhead tank, which supplies water to my family has not been cleaned for the past four or five months. I mean, at least during this epidemic, it was never clean. I have been requesting now people who come with a, a cleaner and a pump and all that, I'll be requesting them. They have promised me that during this week we'll positively do it. Sanitize the drinking water area properly and the taps, they should be sanitized every one hour. Do the mopping, do the cleaning. No mouth contact to be allowed. Our children have the habit of taking their mouths and holding it, holding the tap to the mouth and opening the tap. Don't allow that, please. Give these instructions to the children in the very beginning also. Provide for glasses and let a child drink his water from a glass and it should be put on an eating tray and there should be some cutlery also there if needed. Use alternate taps and let there be social distance while the other people are waiting in a line maintaining their social distance also. Make it mandatory for all kids to wear masks even for the teachers and the staff members, whether they are in the staff room, whether they have come to talk to the principal, whether the principal is on a round, everybody should be wearing a mask. 
And if a child is not wearing a mask or the mask has come off, the mask has lost its hold, the mask is not useful, please always keep a good supply of masks available in the school. Distribute them to the concerned teachers in the classes. They can maintain a record of it if you need. There isn't anything required. Our teachers can be trusted. Whenever a child is without a mask, give him a mask and ask him to replace it by a new mask after a couple of days. Do not use elevators if there's a child who has been found with an outbreak. During the day you find that there's a child who has, uh, who has become who was asymptomatic but now has become symptomatic, has symptoms of the disease and the doctor is attending to him and now he has been handed over to the parent, then be very cautious not to touch any elevator, any lift. Do not open the doors or the windows with your hands. We always have this habit of using them. Well, that's the natural way I was taught to open a door. Please use your either the arm, that's the uh, elbow, or use your foot. I have, I have seen that some schools have provided an arrangement where you press and the door opens and then it swings back on its own. So please have created this habit that nobody will touch the handles. Nobody will touch the doors and push them with his hands. Even if a bell has to be touched, it can be done with a pen. Even if a bell has to be touched, it can be done very minutely without using the whole hand. Please study about the active life of this virus. That means how long does the virus survive? How long does it survive in air if somebody sneezes? How long does it survive when Professor Andu is talking to us and if he is sending out these viruses? How many of them? Thousands of them at a time. Talking is the most dangerous thing for the spread of this virus. And how long will it survive if it is on paper? How long will it survive if it's on steel or cement? How long it is, will it survive on cloth or other materials and make your disinfection plans accordingly? So if it survives on paper for only two hours, you need to do the cleaning before the two hours are over. If it survives for 24 hours, then you need to do the cleaning twice or thrice. Make it a habit that children always when they sneeze, they either sneeze in their hankies, which are held like this in their hands, or they sneeze in the cuff of their shirts. Uh, or their armpits. They sneeze like that. P no spitting, no sneezing, no coughing in the, in the classes. School assembly, you know that's not possible. More than 20 people cannot be allowed to assemble at a place, at any place at all. So if at all you want to conduct an assembly, it should be done inside the classroom only. Or if you have a designated area where you can collect more than 20 children also, you may take the liberty of doing it at your own risk. Information dissemination, you may say, is very important and that we do only at the assembly. For that, I would request you, please use your PA system. You have a public address system. You have a virtual announcement system. You are connected with every class nowadays on the speakers. You do your assemblies and make important announcements. Use that important announcement system for a combined assembly of all the children with children standing in their own classes. Please specify an activity which we call as the circle time that it's done in every class at the beginning of the class. It is the children get into a circle, not necessarily a circle. It can be any octagonal shape. It can be the teacher in the center, but the children have to maintain that six feet distance and let the children voice out, speak out, voice out their concerns, their feelings, because I will be emphasizing very soon within just next another 20 minutes more on this aspect that we need to take care of. I know you must have taken care of the safety aspect I am sure you will take wonderful care of the teaching learning, but perhaps we may be very low on the last aspect of social and emotional learning. So please do have a circle time of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour even, where you can do a little meditation, a little yoga, uh, a little time of looking within, and a little of expressing yourselves and your concerns, voicing out yourself. Uh, that reflection and then expression, these are the two important activities. Every class assembly must teach the children about hygiene practices, including hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene and food hygiene and other assembly functions that you want to perform must. I'm looking at assembly for 20 inside a class. 
I am talking of that assembly. I'm not talking of the large assemblies that we have been in the habit of conducting over years. Uh, please inculcate in your children a habit of giving to others, sharing with others, not in the class, not today, but giving help to others, giving food to others, reading newspapers, keeping update information and help them to dissect facts and news. You have so many channels which are dedicated or committed to doing activities for which they are being paid by organizations. We need not discuss that, but a lot of information that has been percolating or we have read during the last few months, I even felt that these were facts. But after a day or two or after a week, I found out that it was all fake news. The parent-teacher meetings, whenever you want to hold them, in such a scenario, they can't be conducted inside the school, hold them virtually, hold them online. Please train your support staff and sensitize them as to what disinfection, serve, what purpose does it serve? How to dispose of items that they find as waste items. If you can, give a COVID-19 insurance to your teachers and to your other employees. Uh, let there be self-learning goals in the curriculum for all kinds of activities. Every activity that you do in the curriculum should have some goal. How will that goal be assessed? Let that be mentioned. Every parent must confirm that no family member has tested positive and in case there is a positive tested case, then the child should not be permitted till the quarantine period and the negative testing of the family member is done. Ensure students wear a face mask. The word or cover face through cloth while inside the school premises, I would say no to this. I wrote it down here because some uh, children are finding it very difficult to carry on the type of mask that's being sold in the market. They do not have N95 real masks. Even the N95 mask that I purchased for 250 rupees on the first day, 900 rupees on the second day was a fake mask. It was not a real N95 because I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe through the mask. Otherwise, N95 allows you to breathe properly. Now, some children may find difficulty in breathing while using a mask. It is only for them. Please have an emergency plan for an eviction drill in case of an earthquake, in case of a fire. You already have that plan in force or in case of some emergency where the children need to be sent home immediately. You should be ready with that evacuation plan. What about classroom teaching? Uh, I won't talk directly about teaching, but I would like that a sanitizer, alcohol hand rub, masks and gloves are provided in each classroom. Every teacher has a kit of them in her cupboard. They are in the classroom, not in the staff room. Please ensure that the teacher also maintains a distance of six feet from her children. She should draw a line that no child is allowed to come to me beyond that line. And I will not also cross that line. So for the time, your movement will be horizontal, not, uh, not vertically. You can't go deeper into the class, but you can only move in front of the class to your right and to your left. Please open all the doors and all the windows of your class. Let ventilation be sufficient. Let there be a lot of sunlight and fresh air. The teachers must ensure that they have washed their hands, they have sanitized their hands before they enter a classroom. And then they should not say that now I'm going to the other class, I sanitized my hands in the morning. No, sanitize them again when you go to the second class. When you leave a class, sanitize them. When you enter a class, sanitize them. Carry your own chalk set. A small geometry box with your own pieces of chalk, with your own markers, your own register and your own diary. Don't ask a child to bring it for you. Don't depend on, a, on an orderly or a helper to bring them for you. Carry them for you. Don't allow anybody else to touch these objects. And if you are wise enough, then cover all these objects with plasticine or, or sorry, with plastic and then give that plastic a rub every day in the morning, every day in the evening. If you are checking notebooks or assignments of children, I would prefer that you don't do that. Use minimal contact, even the mobiles that you carry, uh, you can use, uh, disinfect them also, but you can use a lot of technology and lots of mobile applications that are available for checking these assignments. 
uh, like oral assessment, like dictation, use rubber gloves if it is necessary to touch these papers and these notebooks and get them sanitized periodically. Every student must bring his own notebook and stationary items. If possible, ask them to cover these with plastic so that cleaning can be done using a soft linen cloth dipped in a solution of 1% hypo sodium hypochlorite. And then please during the learning focus on the minimum learning outcomes. These books have already been published by the NCRT. They are available, have enough copies of them. They can be printed. If you have only one copy, you can have them photostat in the market and made into spiral booklets. Give them portions of them to every teacher. The English teacher can have only his portion of minimum learning outcomes for his class. So you can see, you can use one notebook, one I mean, printout for four or five teachers. It is only for these minimum learning outcomes that we should focus now on our teaching. When we teach and use the own learning practices, they should be used only to complement what we have done in the classroom. Our classroom and online learning being the same, deficiencies of classroom can be removed through online and deficiencies of online can be removed through physical classrooms. Uh, if your children have been coming to school for eight, 10 days and everything is fine, create an out of classroom educational experience. Take them outside the classroom into an open space, which is adjacent to the classroom or which is adjacent to the school building in a field. After you have intimated the principle that you are carrying your children and she has, or he has made all the arrangements of sanitization. In case an outbreak is detected, then it becomes all the more important. Whatever processes of academic leadership you have, whatever structures of management you have, integrate them in such a way that you are able to follow both the traditional and the blended models of teaching. The blended model of teaching allows for face-to-face -face teaching and allows for online teaching. It allows for rotation between the two. You can use that also. A continuity planning must be done. Choose the best model because there can be remote learning, which is non-internet based. There can be online learning, which is internet based. There can be blended learning, which is both non-internet, internet. You see, when the children come to you and you are removing their difficulties, it is non-internet based blended learning because very soon when they go home, you will be teaching them online. You will be giving them an assignment that they have to discuss on their own. But when they come to class, you can give them a project where they could work together, maintaining their social distance depending on the age of the children, depending on their learning needs, depending on the resources you have in the school or in the community, you can organize your blended learning because blended learning in itself is a learning management system. Blending it does not mean combining A with B. Blending is a learning management system where the same class is sometimes divided into six small groups. One group interacts with the teacher, two groups work on their laptops or computers, two groups are working on a project. So you have six groups doing their own work. And every time these groups keep on rotating, every child gets an opportunity of meeting the teacher, working on the laptop, working on the project. Please ensure that whatever model you use of blended learning, your staff and students are very well versed with that. Please collaborate among your schools. Uh, I, I have seen more than 200 branches of DPS. One does not know from the other. It is the right hand not knowing the left hand. They, each one of them is a franchisee and he thinks he is the king of the world. But the six main schools of DPS, which are the earlier branches, which are not franchisee, they do collaborate. They have their own training and resource center at Rohini. They have their own workshops where they allow the franchisee people also to drop in sometimes. They have the same curriculum being followed. They have the same methodologies. They sometimes exchange their teachers. You see, that kind of a community collaboration is required now, not only with your own schools, but with the government schools, with government bodies, with the larger community on that model, because some school may be doing that model very well. I may not be succeeding with it. I will have to learn from that school. By and large, there are certain things because we want to ensure that our children are very happy we have to see that the methodology that we are using of teaching is child-centered. I have listed 10 activities that you must always do. 
whatever exercises you do in the class must bring joy to the children whether the exercises are physical or learning some indoor games must be organized during the time when the children come back to school there has to be an active inquiry period you can start with some puzzles you can start with some uh, logical games some reflective conversation has to be there in the classes there should be a storytelling not telling them stories about what happened to covid patients and how the government is acting on that give them stories from your ancient culture give them fairy stories give them stories from sindbad the sailor uh, the stories of vasco de gama the stories of greater science but storytelling should be there there should be some guided practices for mindfulness this could be meditation this could be asking the children to look within this could be asking the children to go for long deep breathing this could be asking the children to concentrate on their own thoughts group discussions must be held role plays must be organized and even skits on certain situations children must be allowed to make individual as well as group presentation and there must be activities organized in the children uh, organized in the class which brings the children closer these are activities for building rapport where the children come closer to one another because they are working in a team they realize the importance of one with the other if you look at this diagram i am talking of cell social and emotional learning what is important for social and emotional learning is that my children are socially aware of who they are they are aware of themselves also they are able to manage their own self self management self regulation self direction they are able to take decisions and are responsible for their own decisions they are able to build up interpersonal relationships and they have those skills and if i extend these now outside these five skills self management responsible decision making relationship skills social awareness and self awareness this has to happen within the classrooms i have to have the social and emotional curriculum and instruction for these things i don't leave these things to chance teaching the children to manage their own selves is to be done by me making them aware of who they are and what they are and what their talents and capabilities are is for me making them aware of their social responsibility helping them to take responsible decisions helping them to build good relationships this is for me this must happen in the classrooms which means in turn it must happen in the school the school wise practices that they are and the policies that they are must be for social and emotional learning and then it must be extended further to homes and communities also because schools alone or classrooms alone will not succeed in developing social and emotional learning and building up the social and emotional health of our children i have given you some posters there are two on the slide they are on the website of uh, mhrd or you can go to the website of uh, the disaster management group you will find these 10 12 posters they can be used actually they are posters for creating awareness uh, mindfulness developing requirements i mean like do virtual meetups make me time plan activities keep your routine please get them and put them on a few boards you can download them if you don't get them you are not able to locate them let me know i will send you the copies of them how do we ensure the emotional well being of our students and teachers you all know that we all feel a little stress we are all anxious there is a little grief there is a little worry it happens always during the disaster and it happens after the disaster and children because of their age because of their being young are more vulnerable and we have to appreciate this that the feeling of stress is natural the feeling of being anxiety or grief or worry is natural the schools are therefore advised that we take steps that whenever we see any symptom of stress for example the students and uh, are not are worried they are not concentrating they are not paying attention to the work they are socially cut off they are not mixing with others these are signs of stress they may fall into depression they are not concentrating on the job in hand then we in consultation with the parents need to take appropriate action the teachers the counselor in the school and there may be some health workers also either in the school or outside the school we must work together as a team 
to build up the emotional safety of their children. First provide it, and then if the child is not emotionally in good health, emotionally in sound health, we have to restore his health back to him. The times are tough, and these tough times have impacted all of us. I have been affected greatly. You can't see it on my face, but I, I know what I see, how many hours of sleep I have lost, uh, how much of weight I have lost. The same is true of each one of you. Some of us have suffered more, some of us have gone undergone less. The reason being our emotional strength. Some of you were emotionally strong enough to bear this trauma and therefore you are, you are doing better than me. I was not so strong emotional. And the teachers in turn might have affected. They might have been affected. They may not be able to lead so well. They may not be able to manage their students so well. Therefore, when the school opens, you will see these changes. Help your teachers. The way you help your children to overcome this uh, emotional trauma, the stress, the anxiety, and the grief, and the worry, and the impact of it now. In the same way, our teachers have also been affected. And you know, they have never rested. They have been, even when they had their summer vacation time, they have been all busy preparing their e-content, developing their lessons, preparing their presentations, and being in touch and trying to maintain a smile on their faces and laugh with the children and give it to them. And then they have been listening to all nonsense that I have been talking to them. Uh, telling them that you are not doing this or you are not doing that. You should have prepared yourselves much earlier. I mean, you can understand the tensions are very heavy. Besides that, they have been all faced with an economic depression and economic crisis. Many of them have, I mean, they were two partners doing a job or they had their parents doing a job. One of them has lost the job. They had a business which they have lost. They are not working. They had to migrate. They had to give up their rented houses. I mean, they had to cut on most of their expenses. To, to manage. So they have been managing. Therefore, please, they won't tell you their stories, but their work culture will tell you the story. The moment they start working and you find that they are lacking in their management, which earlier I used to find, they are lacking in their ability to lead and manage students, which I earlier used to find, they need your help. The mental well-being of our teachers should, take, should be taken care of in an equal measure, I would say more important. Because if you cannot take care of the teachers, your teachers will not be then able to take care of your children. Ask your teachers that they should take proactive steps for their mental well-being. Proactive would mean go for a walk, eat nutritive diet, sleep properly, do not be tense, share your feelings with a colleague. I mean, these can be some proactive steps that can be taken. Go in for a medita little meditation. Have faith in him, the Almighty. He, he will restore everything back. And whatever is our fate, we are destined to meet it. Then, please develop some online training modules with the help of a counselor for providing counseling to general teachers as to how to coop up in the present situation, how to bring up their emotional well-being and their health, and how this can be done. I'm, I'm sorry, I moved ahead. And then, similarly, Short modules of counseling can be developed for emotional stability, removal of anxiety, and improving upon self-confidence of children. Small, interesting modules. They can be built up. Your counselor can do very well in this. A module for children how to face anxiety, how to overcome stress, how to develop confidence, one module at a time. And this can be shown to the children. Now, what about senior secondary or secondary stage students? What kind of activity should we do with them? Please make them share their feelings and emotions with their parents, with their teachers and other family members. They must understand that we all are a bundle of emotions. But those of us who are able to control those emotions, channelize those emotions, do well in life. And when they share their feelings and their emotions, they don't hide them, they do better. Let them engage themselves in activities and feel positive all the time. Never encourage negative feelings. Never keep on listening to news only about COVID. How many people did die in USA? How many have been infected in Soviet Russia? How many have been infected in Maharashtra? This news is depressing. Keep them away, the senior secondary students from this news. Let them communicate with their teachers and their friends. Let them spend more time with their parents and their siblings and other members of the family by involving them in activities like playing carom, like playing antakshari, 
or reading from a story book or solving some puzzles or crossword or let them play some music and dance together if the senior children i mean the senior secondary or the secondary stage children start engaging themselves in these activities it will bring down their emotional depressions this is a set of another to caring with psychosocial support of children unlock family togetherness fitness activities new skills online time responsible behavior there are some activities of coping for stress for the secondary stage uh, the child must be taught that he must acknowledge whatever he feels is right it's okay there's nothing bad feeling something there is nothing wrong with it but reflect on that feeling think inwardly reflection is an activity that goes within ourselves it's going inward going within and during the lockdown because they have been all alone they have done a lot of reflection but possibly not analyzed their own reflection and through reflection they can plan a course of action which brings in the desired change being aware of one's own feelings one's own sensations this helps us to understand who we are and what we are always think positive well this is the panacea for all kinds of emotional problems always think positive never uh, allow a negative thought even to come near to you your mindset should be positive your attitude should be positive do not give up hope and always pass on this positivity to others bring positive thoughts talk about positive things and circulate it percolate it that's how it spreads your routine has to be as per a definite schedule and you have to manage your time plan a routine plan a routine you can do it on a diary and then bring in a discipline in your life it will bring in a positive effect on your own feelings please modify your time table the daily activities that you do reduce the time on them especially during the lockdown now you need to pay more attention to your emotional health to your physical health and to your studies also this will shift bring in a shift from lockdown to a normalcy state take care of your body and mind eat a healthy balanced food practice a little of meditation if you can do that a little yoga or a few breathing exercises you can do it after the school you must calm your mind this will help you to keep maintain better mental and physical health also please remember that you have enough sleep required sleep because i have seen some children have been sleeping too long not waking up up to 10 or even 9 till the classes would begin well that's bad maintain a habit of getting up early but maintain your 6 hours sleep if you need 7 if you are weak anemic you need 7 hours sleep have 7 hours sleep please understand and become aware of your thoughts why a particular thought has come to your mind why do you feel in a particular way analyze that reflect on that maintain a diary write down how you are going to follow a particular course of action how are you going to change the feelings that you have and share that with either a sibling that you have your brother your sister share it with a friend whom you trust your best friend and then the teachers also need to take a few hints for their emotional health of their students please engage your children in conversational activities in the classroom it's important that they talk they talk this will help them to bring back to normalcy the classroom environment has again to be created it was an environment of joy an environment where everybody could speak an environment where conversation goes on during the lockdown period they engaged only in interactive sessions now make the sessions more interactive by asking the children to express state their feelings what they did during the lockdown how they acted in on certain issues this will bring them back to more on mental wellness tips for students during covid and tips for parents to help children with special needs then play some indoor games in the school a mental math game a word antakshari a making words some music some dance activities very useful because dance would be cathartic uh, theater they these will these can be linked with subject areas while you are teaching something i mean for example in teaching of poetry there can be a lot of singing uh, in teaching of some other subject you may link some other activity 
under the guidance of the subject teacher, it is better to have these activities in a larger proportion than you usually have. You have a small activity for five, 10 minutes. Now have an activity of 15 minutes and combine a few things like this. This will help the children to get free from stress and bring them back to health, mental health I'm talking of. Make the children feel safe. They should be able to share anything and everything with the teacher. The day they share everything and anything with the teacher, you can rest assured that they are emotionally safe now. Emphasize the fact that COVID-19 caused deaths and children are not the ones who die because of COVID-19. They get COVID-19, they suffer from it, but they get healthy very soon. Only thing is children are 10 times more able to transmit it than elders. You see, if an elder at the age of 40 is a case of COVID, he can transmit it to five, 10 people. But if a child gets it, he will be very safe, very healthy quickly, but he will be able to transmit to 100 people as quickly as possible. Please help children to engage in activities that are collaborative, that need more than one person. It should not be an individual activity. There should be activities that have to be done by many. Do some deep breathing exercises. The children must do it. This will help students to concentrate, make them mindful. Their emotional togetherness can be brought about by the teacher. He can create an environment where they feel together. How do they do it? Firstly, uh, there's a myth among us that those who suffered from COVID-19 are outcasts now. We need to keep away ourselves from them because they can transmit COVID to us. Well, they have suffered COVID. They are our wealth now. How are they? Because now they have the antibodies and if unfortunately I fall ill, they can provide me the plasma and the antibodies and I can also survive. Therefore, remove this outcasting of anybody who is from COVID-19 or who has suffered COVID-19. Encourage children to give small gifts as token of love and appreciation. Appreciate the service of a doctor, appreciate the service of a policeman, appreciate the service of an ambulance driver, Appreciate the service of the man who brought cabbages to your home or the milkman who delivered home at your delivered milk at your doorstep. Small tokens of love, a flower, a card. Well, these are small things that the children can do, make them feel happy because it makes the child feel happy. Giving makes the giver more happy than the taker. There should be caring activities. Students may keep some water for the birds at home. They may help the mother or the father in keeping their premises at home clean. This also helps in bringing positive feelings in sharing work and feel, feeling that he also is responsible. Two more posters, one is on self-learning, taking challenges, courage, innovation, empathy, and the other is empower mental health and well-being of the children. Acknowledge the change. Understand that the times are not the same. The normals have changed, the lifestyle has changed. You have to accept the change. We cannot fight this change. We cannot deny this change. The change never occurred, that's not the slogan. Accept that the students are finding it difficult and the present times are really difficult. Make sure that the students know that you are there for them. I don't know how you can make it sure, but through your love, through your kindness, through your concern, Share your concern. I love you all. I'm worried for you. The way you have been worried for me, you've been always asking me, how are you, madam? How are you, sir? I am also worried for you. And let me know when I can be of any help to you. In any matter whatsoever, in any feeling that you want to express, do it with me. Do some reflective acti activities. They are very much beneficial. It's an activity for self-awareness. It develops a better understanding, not only of your own self, but an understanding of others. Because when you compare yourself with others, you know they must also be perhaps feeling the same. If you are aware of yourself and your feelings and your reflections, then you can understand the feelings of others also. These reflective practices are very helpful in developing creative thinking also. Because when you ask a child to reflect, he has to find out why did I do this? How did I do this? How can I do it better the next time? Or how can I repeat this thing because this made me feel better? So it encourages a kind of a thinking which is both critical and creative. And it also encourages him to take active part in the classroom activities because they are going ultimately to keep him very happy. 
Tell them life stories of great men who face challenges so that they know what is significant in them also. Students do not get much of a chance to talk about themselves without interruption. Let every student speak about himself for five minutes, especially his experiences during the lockdown that have made him behave in certain different ways. Stop for three minutes, have a three minute pause, an activity which we call a three minute pause. It is done usually in the classroom at the end of a day. Every student is given a chance to reflect on the concepts and the ideas that have been taught to him during the day and that he has learned, the connections that he has learned, the new connections with the prior knowledge and the new knowledge and what clarifications did he seek. They have to ask themselves these questions. I changed my attitude about, I am more aware now. I was surprised about, I felt about. These are the activities and the questions that he must ask himself in this three minute pause. This will help him to combine what he had studied earlier, previous knowledge with the new knowledge of today, the new concepts of today. He will seek and his knowledge will become grounded more eloquently. The last two, uh, I mean, posters from them, well-being posters. Uh, I'm sure you are as tired as I am. Let us watch this for a little while. It should play. I don't know why it does not play but I can't force it to play. <laughs> Is there any reason, my son, for it's not playing? Doesn't matter. We go ahead. I won't waste time. Uh, I'll, I'll do it later, beta. It is better that because I know the time available to me is less. What about classroom activities that we use to conduct in the classes? We have to ensure that classroom activities go on but there has to be minimal movement in, within the school. I don't take children from my class to the library. I don't take children from my class to the music room. I don't take my children from my class to the dance. Let the dance teacher, let the music teacher, let the librarian move the class. There should be minimum movement because if there is a minimum movement, there will be traffic and I won't be able to manage that social distancing. All such activities be done in the classroom and all those points that have been touched during this activity, whether that was in the computer lab, because they had to touch computer monitors or keyboards or mouses, they must be immediately sanitized. Avoid any such activity in the class that needs physical contact of one child with the other, like games. Uh, say, Kabaddi would be one such game where contact is essential. Avoid that at all. You can instead have badminton, you can instead have chess, you can have carom. This can be played. And then immediately after the game, the whole carom board, the two rackets and the shuttlecock, the chess pawns, the chess uh, I mean men, we call them chess men and the chess board, they all need to be sanitized immediately so that other group of children, when they come, they use the same things. By now, you are all experienced in conducting your assessment in various ways. You have conducted in different ways. Uh, I would only again emphasize, I have done it with all my friends. Most of you are a part of it. I believe that assessment can be learning. I believe that assessment can help us in learning better. And then assessment can help us to find out how much the children have learned. These are the three ways. I would take the middle one first. Assessment as learning. When you are involved and the children are involved in the learning process, they should be able to monitor their own progress. They should ask questions. They should practice things. And students use the self-assessment and the teacher's feedback that's given to them so that they reflect on what is being learned and they improve upon their own understanding and start moving towards learning goals. So this is assessment used as learning. I mean, during the class, you ask a few questions. During the class, you summarize what you have taught so far, what you call a sexual recapitulation. At the end of the lesson, you again ask them a few questions. You do a closure or a summarization. This is assessment as learning. You are assessing the children, but the purpose of this assessment is that whether learning is going on or not, and you ensure that assessment does help in learning. 
Now let us come to the first one, assessment for learning. This is what we use to do in CCE as formative learning. Assessment done at the end of a week through a periodic or unit test. Assessment done through a worksheet. Assessment done through an assignment. Assessment done through a project. What is the purpose of these assessments? The purpose is to ensure that the child is really following the teacher and what is being taught to him. It's a test of his understanding of his knowledge. And if there is any gap found at this stage, because it's only a week earlier that we taught him, it's only 15 days earlier that we taught him. If there is a gap found in his learning, we improve upon that gap and help him to improve. So wherever assessment helps the child to improve, that assessment is assessment for learning. Identifying the gaps, remediation. Now assessment of learning. This is your testing that comes at the end of three months. In some cases at the end of six months. In some schools at the end of a year, they have a single shot examination or they have a term and examination and two term examinations where you give the child a pen and pencil paper now, or you give him an online paper, or you give him a long assignment which he has to do as a project of research on his own, and then he comes back to you and submits it. So you assess him, yes, you've done well on this whole course which we taught you, and these are the marks and the grades which you assign to him. The grades and marks are assigned only in the last category of assessment. Uh, by now, I am sure you have found out various techniques of assessing the child. And Online assessment you have found, the children have been doing very well in multiple choice questions, MCQs, in objective type of questions, fill in the blanks, completion type, matching type, they have done exceedingly well. But you have found it difficult to do kind, some kind of subjective assessments. For subjective assessments, you will have to depend upon assignments, completion of assignments. Uh, ignore the fact that they are being helped by their parents or not, it doesn't matter. You can ask the child to write it in front of your presence. Give him 20 minutes, 10 minutes, and tell him submit it. Thereby, he will get minimum help from his parents. Sometimes you can ask him to compare. You have given him a question. You can ask him. The book is there. The lesson is there in the book. You can take help from the book and do, do write it. That way, you are forcing him to read, do some reading work also. There can be assignments or assessments that can be done through this also. I'm sure by now you have set up a medical room and an isolation room in your school. You already have a sick bay. You already have the service of a doctor or a nurse available in the school. And in addition to that, you have made arrangements of a nearby hospital or a doctor on call. You have done that. Please check status of COVID-19 testing. And if students and staff and their families and communities need help in that, give it to them. Ensure that when the vaccination is available, it's given to students according to the age and their requirement. Keep the medical history of the students and staff with you. Anything hampering their immune system, it should be in your knowledge. Maintain record of their daily temperature if possible. You can have it computerized. It could be another part of the ERP system now. Make staff and students aware that there are some common diseases which are airborne like the influenza. That doesn't mean somebody is suffering from COVID. Set up a rapid task team in your school. And this rapid task team could collaborate with the district medical officer, the block medical officer. In case there's an outbreak, they are the people who will take charge. In case you are short of staff, engage some Anganwadi workers, some ASHA workers, they will help you in these functions. The teachers have to also be on surveillance. On surveillance, not under surveillance. They have to be alert and vigilant. Symptoms of nagging, irritation, or crying among young students. If their skin is turning red and they are becoming feverish among older students. So if a young student starts nagging and gets irritable and starts weeping, and if an elderly student, you find him turning red, blushing more often, he is running temperature also, well, these are some signs. You must inform students that they talk to the teacher about their travel plans, if they have any travel history, if they have any in the family. There are some students who are living in their families with older parents. There are grandparents living in the family. And those grandparents may have medical issues, uh, diabetic, uh, asthmatic, 
they may have kidney problems or they may have breathing problems they may have heart problems they must share this information with you because if such a case gets infected with covid well then the chances of their recovery become almost negligible have a database of all the contact numbers of the children or their parents build your lesson plans so that you have minimum contact between the student to student and student to teacher this is where when you are involving your children in activities and you are planning your lessons ensure that in any activity that i do one child is not required to touch another child or touch anything that belongs to the other child or the teacher is not required to touch a child or touch anything that belongs to the child neither is the child required to touch anything that belongs to the teacher please advise and counsel students to take care of themselves this will raise their morale also boost their morale keep on telling them you are wonderful children god created you as special children and made them for made you for me and therefore we are all in this together maintain a record of absenteeism and analyze that if you feel that there is a child who has been away from school for more than 10 11 days it's important that you talk frankly politely and privately to the parent to find out whether there is a case in the family because of which the child is not being sent the principal is the most important person in these times especially when the school is reopening otherwise also i think the principal has the whole onus of responsibility on her head please download the government mandated arogya setu application see that your students senior students and your staff members all of them must you must talk to them and then suddenly you may when you meet a staff member tell him please show me the arogya setu application i mean if you tell them they must do it it's an advice this time it's not an order but virtually it must be implemented by one and all whatever is the plan of your work how are you going to teach in the next 12 days when is your assignment going to be held in case during these days there is a case detected how will we function this plan of business must be known to all your plan of operations must be known to everybody there must be no confusion in an emergency in case there is an outbreak the turning points the responsibilities of every person of how to leave the children how to send the children home how to act at that point of time so that we do not get contaminated is also very very important the staff and the students need to be trained in the online tools of teaching by now you have done it very few a very small percentage i would say 1% or 2% still needs this training or more training maintain a connection with education authorities and the health department and whatever recent happenings are happening around the school you must keep yourself updated about that about your town about the city or the locations from where your children come digitalize each of these records because you need quick documentations in case of emergency you need quick information to come to you on your table at once the awareness campaigns within the community may also be increased that can be done by meeting the parents online by meeting the community online not physically as on today uh my friend mr tiwari is with me now and he will stay with me i wrote these two slides word by word for you only sir i wrote them somewhere certain words are not mine i copied them but this is all mine please build up temporary partitions everywhere in the boarding house you have beds for boarders you have tables for boarders have a partition between one boarder and another boarder be it a bed or be it his study table physical and social distancing has to be maintained in all hostels you may say i am not in a position to hold that call only 50% of the hostlers right now call the other 50% later on stagger it signage is to be put and messages to be put for the boarders like no spitting no physical contact social distancing to be maintained visiting hours only so and so alternate space arrangements may be made you can you can open out more space and shift their reading spaces or their eating spaces their mess spaces to those places please call back only those students to the hostel first about whom you know 
they had no facility for receiving online education. They didn't have internet connectivity in their villages. They didn't have mobiles. If they had mobiles, the connectivity was not so good. They did not have laptop facilities. Call those children first. They should be your first target. Bring them to the hostel first. They need more studies. They need more attention. The higher class students may be called first as per the accommodation facility of the school. Do not call the junior children. You have children from class three or class four upwards. You can call only 10th, 9th, 11th and 12th first. That's a very large number. You will have more than 300 children of those. Call them, then you can call the junior children of six, seven, eight. Add them class by class. Screen every boarder before he enters. And when they enter the hostel, ensure that they do not have any symptom which is related to this uh, dangerous disease. Only such boarders should be allowed. Even if you have 0.1% doubt about a symptom of a child, please send him back home through his parent. Since these students will be coming from different states, different areas, different locations, they'll be using public transport. Some of them will be using public buses, public trains. It's very important that they are told beforehand that please minimize your interaction and your contact while traveling and while arriving at the hostel. And if you have contacted, give them a quarantine for two days or three days. It doesn't matter. Watch them. As per the quarantine requirements of the state, if the state says they need to be quarantined for one week, they need to be quarantined for 14 days, quarantine them. Their health status during this quarantine period should be monitored because they are coming from different areas. Uh, naturally, the chances of they are getting contaminated in the transport or on the road are more. Please arrange a regular visit of a counselor. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to request all my principals. Uh, you'll say, sir, why are you sorry? On the one hand, you are requesting. On the other hand, I feel sorry. Because in the name of counselors, we do not have counselors. I, my teachers are better counselors than the approved psychological counselors. We appoint anybody as a counselor without looking at his counseling ability. We have to ensure that these counselors do not harass our children. They look after their mental and emotional health. And if a child is having health issues, if he is having emotional health issues or mental health issues, the counselor talks about it to us, advises us, does not reveal it to the child or to the parent. We need to take care of the child. So these counselors need to be adequately trained beforehand that they have to ensure that our children are looked after properly. Please see that nobody visits the hostel. Other than those members of staff who are required to supervise the study hours of the children, and those staff members should be tested first, their health status should be ensured. Nobody, unless of course, there's a, uh, I mean, a mess helper who is required to go there, a doctor who is required to go there, they can go. Please ensure that your kitchen staff is checked up every week so that their hygiene is maintained. Build up the capacity of your hostel staff, sir. How do I build up their capacity? Advise them on physical and social distancing. They cannot sit all of them together and smoke a BD outside the door of the canteen on the backside, which is not visible to me. And all of them chat together. Thereby, if one of them is contaminated, he gives or passes on this contamination to all. They are to be told that for the sake of the children, for the sake of the school, for my sake and for your sake, you are to maintain the social distance under all norms. They have to be very clean. Their health and hygiene is very important. They have to provide nutritious food to all the hostlers. Please see that your hostel has a quality Wi-Fi connection. Provide cable connections for television and radio. They are important. And in addition to that, if your children have brought their laptops and you ask them to bring them with them, because you may be holding some online classes in addition to the physical classes, then give them the facility of a quality Wi-Fi. And nowadays quality Wi-Fi is available in most of the areas. I end this up with this video and I'm sure perhaps this also will not work. Uh, this also is not working. Uh, I'll do something. I'll stop sharing.
I'll stop sharing and then I'll go back. I'll stop this also.